Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. We're going to multiply radicals. Um, this is very similar to simplifying radicals, except instead of just having one uh, radical, I have two. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and simplify 5 squared to 6a times 2 square root of 27a squared. Step number one. I just need to make sure if I can do this or not. Um, the thing that needs to be true in order to multiply radicals is that the index has to be the same. And if you notice here, the index on the first radical is a 2, since it's not written there. The index is a 2 on the second radical, since it's not written there. So step number one is good. That's either going to be I keep going or I just stop. I can't do it. If I couldn't do it, then I would just keep it the way it is. Let's say that first radical had a 3 for an index. If there's nothing else I could do to this problem. I would leave my answer the same way as it appears there. All right, step number 2, factor each radicand into primes. All right, so 6a um, is 2 times 3 times a. And then 27a squared is 3 times 3 times 3 times a times a. All right, so step number three, multiply the coefficients and get the radical started. All right, so I'm going to end up with 5 times 2 is 10. And now I have a radical. Now, step number four says place the radicand prime factors from all the radicals. So that's what I did up here at the top under one radical. So I'm going to put everything under one radical. So it looks like at the beginning I have 2 times 3 times a, and then I have a bunch of three, threes and a's in that second radical. I'm going to put it all under the same radical. Now when I do this, I want to group everything into groups since it's easier to find things to circle at that point. So it looks like I have 1, 2. Oops, oh, sorry. Okay. I have 1, 3 in the first radical and 3, threes in the second radical. So that means I have four total threes. So 3, 3, 3, 3. And it looks like I have an A in the first radical, 2 in the second, so that means I have 3 A's. So A times A times A. Okay, at this point it just becomes one big simplifying problem. So now since the index is a 2, I just circle pairs of numbers, just like we did before. And I have a pair of 3's, another pair of 3's, one pair of A's, and now I bring one of each group out front. So 10 times 3 is 30, times another 3 is 90, and then I have an A. So I'm going to start with 90A. That's my coefficient. And it looks like I have left under the radical a 2 and an A. And my index is a 2, so remember, if whatever that index is has to make it down into the answer. So my answer is 90A square root of 2A. Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. We're going to simplify square root of 48 times square root of 18. All right, so in order to figure out whether I can actually multiply these radicals, I have to look at the indices, the index. And the index on both of these is a 2, since it's not written there. So it looks like I can go ahead and, and multiply. So first thing I want to do is break each of these radicands down into their prime factors. So let's go for 48. That's uh, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. 18 is 2 times 3 times 3. All right, my coefficients here are 1, so when I go to start my radical, my coefficient's going to remain 1. I don't need to write it there, and I don't need to write the 2 inside the or uh, where the index is. All right, so I can go ahead and start listing my prime factors. So let's say I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 twos. And it looks like I have 2 three threes. Okay, so I'm going to circle pairs of numbers since my index is 2. I'm going to circle pairs. There's a pair of 3's. And I'm going to bring one of each of those groups out. So out front, I'm going to end up with 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 12. Square root of whatever's left over, 2 times 3 is 6. So my final answer here is 12 square root of 6. Hi, it's me, Mr. B. We're going to simplify 5 cube root of 20 times 3 cube root of 14. All right, first thing, assess whether you can multiply them. Both of the indexes are 3, so I'm good. So I can go ahead and break each of these, prime, uh, each of these radicals down into prime factors. 20 is 2 times 2 times 5, 
and 14 is 2 times 7. Now you may ask, why do I have to break these things down now? Can't, can't I just multiply these things together and then break it down? And the answer is, yeah, you could. You could take 20 times 14, and that's 280, but then you'd have to break 280 down into its prime factors. It's much easier to break down 20 and 14 into primes than it is 280, or some, whatever big number you end up getting when you multiply the two numbers. So it's easier just to start off by breaking into primes right now. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put my coefficients together. 5 times 3, 15. Start my radical. Got to remember my index is a 3. Now I bring down all my prime factors. 2 times 2 times 2. Put them all into the same radical. I have a 5, and I have a 7. All right, so I'm going to look for groups of 3 of the same thing, since my index is a 3. All right, bring out one of those twos, so 15 times 2, 30, times the cube root of whatever's left over, and that's 5 times 7, which is 35. So my answer is 30, cube root of 35. Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. We're going to simplify 6 times the fourth root of 54 times the fourth root of 9. The indexes are the same, so I can go ahead and multiply. So I'm going to break down each of those radicands into their primes. So 54 is 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. 9 is 3 times 3. All right, go ahead and um, let's go ahead and work with the coefficients. 6 times 1 is 6. Start my radical. Need to remember my index is a 4. And I'm going to go ahead and throw all the prime factors under one radical. I have 1, 2, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3s. Okay, so now I'm going to circle groups of four of the same thing, since my index is a four. And I happen to have a group of three, four threes. So I'm going to bring one of those out. So six times three is 18, times the fourth root of whatever's left over. Two times three is six. So my answer is 18 times the fourth root of six.